So to talk about myself, I have written six books, three of which are short story collections, three of which are full length novels. And at least two of these books, two that I know of, are being adapted for screen in various ways. In my interactions with readers, I found out certain things that have worked for them and certain things that have not. And to summarize all those, I made a presentation which I will be talking about today. And that is what it probably is. Nobody knows what the, what the art of writing a bestseller is, but we can only talk about experience and that is what I am going to do. So let us begin. The first point that I would like to talk about is this. Don't follow best-selling trends. If any of you here have aspiring authors and even if you are not, you will find a connect with this because this talk is designed for readers as well as authors and all of us have at least readers, I suppose. When I started out in, it was 2014, when I decided to give up my lucrative business was a very flourishing business and I decided to leave it and follow this passion of writing. That's what I wanted to do since a long time but I had never taken that leap. In 2014 I did that. When my well-wishers came to know that, that I am deciding to write, I am making a switch of this career, the first question that came was, how will you earn? It went on and when they came to know that my first book is going to be a horror novel and it will have serial killers and cannibalism and it will have dark rites and rituals and things like that then the question became more emphatic how will you earn what will you eat because that was the time when romance was ruling the roost when we had every book inspired from popular authors at that time even now like we had Chetan Bhagat no talk on bestsellers can be complete without him, right? So, when we had Chetan Bhagat having his huge success with One Night at a Call Center and uh, Five Point Someone before that, there was this spate of books written by aspiring authors that had similar kinds of stories, young protagonists falling in love with each other, talking in urban slang and battling with the contemporary problems of the modern world and that is what happened. Then Amish Tripathi came on the scene. And suddenly we had mythology everywhere. There were books written in various hues. All kinds of mythological heroes were pulled from the closet. And they were made as shiny as rock stars. Just like Amish did. So people wanted to write those kind of stories. Globally it was Harry Potter. The young adult sections were filled with magic. Young protagonists. So that is what worked at that time. But did it work for the people who wanted to toe the line blindly? We do not know about that. A few of them did have success, but then it didn't work. But with my book, personally talking, I wrote a book that was very different from what was out there at that time. It was Maya's new husband and it did something for me. It gave me a brand image at least. It told me that this was my groove that I wanted to write on. And it brought me here to this stage. So that is what worked. If you have a story, try to write it, but make sure that your story is not just inspired from someone else, but it is your own story, something that you have made. Don't follow the trends that go on. So let us go to the second point because we have a limitation of time. And the second point, we are all good storytellers. We tell stories to everyone. We at, even if we don't write them, we do narrate stories. And one aspect that we all know as storytellers is that we need to keep our readers invested. I believe that every book is a promise. When an author puts a book out there on the bookshelf, the author is making a promise. And that promise is, that this book will be worth your while. My story will be worth your while. You will be entertained. Probably you will be inspired. And that is what the readers also know. Though the readers do not, it is not spelled out to the readers as such, 
but when a reader picks up a book from a shelf you are all readers so no one of us will ever pick a book to read the intention that we want to hate it we will always want to like that book this starts from the first lines itself when we read the books in the bookstores in the first lines we get an idea of what the book is going to be that is where we decide whether we will buy the book or not and if that author has sold us those few lines of the book the author has also sold us the next few chapters but to keep that kind of writing consistent the author has to follow a particular path which we call as the log line now those who are in the technical world of storytelling will know what a log line is a log line is a one line idea on which the entire story stands uh if you're aware of lord of the rings of course you are then you know that the entire series can be boiled down to a single core idea and that core idea is of a subhuman creature trying to destroy a highly tempting and dangerous object and at the same time battling against the forces who are trying to acquire that object every scene every dialogue every character in that story is towards this end the story hardly meanders from this one core idea take wuthering heights in wuthering heights it is about the machinations of a very evil man who is trying to acquire the love of a woman even at the cost of putting that woman in grave peril that is the whole story cain and abel the feud between two people two estranged friends one of whom is rich and powerful and the other person is poor but he is ambitious that is the whole idea of the book books are written based on this one line idea this log line and when the time comes to pitch this book to anyone whether it be to your readers or maybe to a production house later on this is the log line that people will be looking at and the author who knows the log line very well is an author who writes a very good book popular book we then talk about something known as protagonist centric writing a protagonist is the main character of your book there may be one main character there may be two there may be many as in game of thrones there were so many protagonists but the thing is the entire story is based on this one protagonist we have always as readers we have this very subtle emotion that we want to connect with that protagonist we want to connect with that main character any book that you take when you read the, about that main character you want to identify with that character's joys and sorrows we relate with it we want to identify with how that character moves ahead how the character solves the conflicts that comes in the way and finally when the character has the last moment of triumph that is where we feel that we have also triumphed in some way this is where the inspiration of all good books come from in fact the books that you may probably talk about as being your ideal books are books that have inspired you probably because of the protagonist and the way that we authors do that is by keeping the story protagonist centric for us the protagonist is the epicenter of the story here again let me give the example of harry potter 4000 page series long and the book worked with young adults people who are considered to be highly distracted how did it work rowling did an intelligent thing there by keeping the story protagonist centric the entire 4000 page series barring a few chapters in the book are all about harry potter it's from the point of view of harry potter it's about what harry does it is about what harry sees it is about the problems that harry faces and right from the first chapter onwards we are given these nuggets of harry's life we see his family we see his perils we see what he is facing the world that he is entering into is all seen through harry's eyes and this is protagonist centric writing i have also attempted this in my book yakshini which is the recent one where it is a story of a girl who lives a life from the age of 13 to 31 13 is the age where she realizes that she is not who she thinks she is she is growing rapidly a growth spurt and first chapter is about the conflict that she faces internally because of that and then we go on to see her family's attitude towards it 
then we see her friends how they are looking at her differently and then the male oriented society which is now eyeing her with evil intentions and the social norms that she is in everything is radiating outside from her it's a saga it's a long book but it could manage to keep the readers hooked because this story was protagonist centric this also means that your protagonist has to be a doer you cannot have a passive protagonist in a story people won't like to read that i believe that when you are having a protagonist the protagonist should start at a particular level and the conflict that you are giving the protagonist should be at a higher level this is what all the stories are about in the beginning of the story the protagonist cannot overcome that obstacle but through the story through various actions and whatever happens the protagonist has to level up the protagonist has to reach that level of conflict and that is the point of ultimate showdown which is where the book comes to its climax it is said that we cannot solve problems by remaining at the same state as we were when the problems arose we have to improve we have to go ahead and that is what is the inspiration when we read about protagonist let me go over to the next point and this is a very interesting thing that we all like uh, we remember the movie bahubali right so everything the way that the movie was sold the second part of the movie was sold was through a cliffhanger there it was a part of the entire marketing strategy of the movie and this cliffhanger is what we authors usually use in our books to keep our readers invested i believe that best sellers are built on anticipation they have to keep the reader turn the pages uh page turners unput downable these are the words that we use when we talk about best sellers so, and the way to do it one of the ways to do it is to use cliffhangers we define cliffhangers as points of suspense that's it there are points where something is taken to a very high level and left dangling there the reader now wants to know what happens next when i use cliffhangers i keep four things in mind number 1 the cliffhanger has to happen to the protagonist because if it doesn't happen to the protagonist the readers won't care second the the cliffhanger has to dramatically increase the stakes of the equation something has to happen which is quite huge in scope third i believe that a cliffhanger should not have a single predictable path when you use a cliffhanger there should be multiple possible outcomes and they should have an equal probability because that is where the readers will keep guessing as to what is going to happen next and the fourth the cliffhangers should be an end in itself we call this as a structured end because if we want we can stop the book at the cliffhanger this is where the chapter gets over or the scene gets over or the entire book gets over for this next sequel and that is what we do and the readers are sold so that is how cliffhangers work now the question from some our uh, new authors is how many cliffhangers do we use the thing is you can use as many as you want in fact if you can develop a style where cliffhangers can be used at the end of every scene then you have a very popular book in your hands <coughs> the cliffhangers are also used in different ways in hooks if you see some legendary books or even movies dialogues also follow a hook line like everything said by a character is a prompt for the next thing that somebody else says now this is a hook so it keeps the conversation organic and it keeps us invested in the story also atmosphere can be used as a cliffhanger like in a lone room there is a white curtain suddenly it begins to flutter or the day suddenly turns dark or there's a siren of a vehicle coming from somewhere and you cannot see the vehicle now these are the things that are atmospheric cliffhangers you do not know what is happening what is going to happen and the reader wants to know what will happen in the build up of this scene so that is what keeps us hooked even to the movies and books are nothing about writing visually that is what i believe in fact i believe that writing is not just about plain writing putting words together writing or telling stories rather is an art and it's a performance it's a performance with words you have to use the words to create visual images and that is what we do when we tell stories to youngsters or to friends we try to include noises and sounds these are all things to build the anticipation of the story 
that is what popular authors do next point that i will make is about creating conflicts think about it every story that you have read every story even the stories that you would give me as examples if i were to ask you are the stories that have a strong conflict in them all of us have read alice in wonderland now we were fascinated when we read it for the first time i'm very sure it started with alice in this very different kind of environment uh, it's a world of fantasy and magic and different characters and there were ex uh, interesting exchanges with all those characters and once we know the world then we want to know what is going to happen we are introduced to the struggle that exists in that world the conflict and the conflict is that alice is trapped there is an evil queen and now alice has to get out of that world and go back into her own world now this is the conflict and if that conflict was not there just if it was a world of fantasy then it would not have been a story it would have been just a premise our romance stories bollywood or books now if the boy loves the girl and the girl loves the boy and there is nothing else everything is hunky dory there is no story so in order to make a story we have to build a conflict and of course our indian cinema is quite an expert at that the conflict is brought in the form of religious differences or financial differences or there is a family feud or whatever and that is how the story is sold it's a conflict we all are inspired by our protagonists as i just mentioned and we want to see how they will overcome that conflict if the conflict is relatable we see some part of ourselves in every story and if that conflict is relatable we also want to see how the characters will overcome that conflict and go beyond and i come to the last point which is about over time all the books that have created some kind of global buzz have been those books that have ruffled some feathers they have challenged social norms let us talk about shakespeare's plays today couples are reading in schools and colleges but in those days shakespeare's plays were vulgar they were considered to be vulgar rather they were bawdy they went against the senses of the society at that time charles dickens <coughs> his stories were considered to be lacking in emotional quotient just imagine okay there were these kinds of critics or reviews that he used to get Jane Austen she was believed to be against family values with her books coming to india we had rabindranath tagore classic stories but in those days his portrayal of women was not something that society wanted to accept munshi premchand attacked social customs vices intelligently subtly but the messages were taken but then his stories were entertaining so he could wheel himself with that coming even lower down kushwan singh this man has written some of the most erotic stories ever which india had never seen and though he has written very thought provoking books as well but those were the things that became a brand image for him he ruffled feathers but kushwan singh sells even today we have so many examples there is lolita satanic verses midnight's children um the kite runner memoirs of a geisha all these books even our three mistakes of our life chetan bhagat it was about the gujarat riots right now he wanted to write these stuffs these books worked because the authors did not dilute their pen they wanted to write this these hard hitting concepts and they wrote it in a way that they wanted to write they did not play to the gallery by diluting it new authors some of them that i have come across are afraid to take this plunge they want to tell stories that are hard but then they act conservative they do not want to tell everything like they should have told and these are the books these watered down books are the ones that are mostly rejected because they do not drive home the message in the way they should so i will end my talk by saying that there is a storyteller in all of us we all have that storyteller in us we all have that fascination to tell stories but the thing is we have to learn and there is an art to telling stories and once we hone this art that is the time when we will be putting out beautiful stories that can make this world a better place to live in thank you